So to solve part A, we're going to need to use the EMF formula, which states that the EMF is equal to the number of turns times the change in flux over the change in time. Now the negative sign out in front is simply the correction due to Lenz's law. Now if we expand what the change in flux is, we get that the change in flux is also equal to the change in the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the surface normal. Now if we change any one of those variables, whether it be the magnetic field or the area or the angle, this will create a change in flux and thus creating an induced EMF. So in this question here, since we're changing the angle, this creates a change in flux and once again, an induced EMF. So let's go ahead and plug in those variables. So we get here that the number of turns was 28. We'll go ahead and isolate those two quantities. So we have 1.25 for the B field and the angle, it started out as zero because the B field relative to the surface normal, it was zero degrees. And when we rotate it through an angle of 90 degrees, we get that the angle between the B field and the surface normal now becomes cosine 90. Now the area of a square coil is simply length times width, or since it's a square, we could just say L squared or X squared. But it was given here that we have 2.80 centimeters, so we have to convert that to standard units of meters, which is why we'll move the decimal over so that we get 0 0.028 meters, and we'll square that value. And we'll divide it by the change in time, which was 0.335 seconds. Now we're more worried about just the absolute value of this, so when we get our answer, we'll have a positive value. So we get that the EMF is equal to 0 0.0819 volts, or we can write that as 81. 9 millivolts. Now for part B, we're going to use Ohm's law, which is delta V is equal to IR. Or we could substitute that delta V and we can use the EMF because the EMF is also a voltage. So we can say the EMF is equal to the current times the resistance. Now we'll go ahead and solve for I and then we'll take what we got from part A and we'll divide it by the resistance, which was 0.7 zero ohms. We'll get that the current is equal to 0.105 amps, or we can write that as 105 milliamps. 